Moin Moin and welcome to the Copter College. Three videos of the Phantom 3 are online, that's the unboxing, assembly and the firmware update. Before we come to the first flight, I will go with you through the pilot app of the DJI Phantom 3. Um, I divide this in two parts, first the general part of the pilot app and then I go to the special topics of photo and video because there are some interesting um, points which I want to go a little bit deeper in. So I divide this in two videos, one of the general topics and then of the photo and video topics. So. One difference between the Phantom 2, and lots of you may know the Phantom 2, some of you fly the Phantom 2, and the Phantom 3 is when you want to make setups of the copter, you don't have to go to your computer, you don't to have a software on your computer, connect the Phantom with a computer via USB cable, no. That's um, not again the same, it's, it's, um, that's the past, and the future is the Phantom 3. Everything you want to change in the settings, you do this with the app and you do this on the flight. You can do lots of changes uh, during your flight. You don't have to land, you don't have to put the USB cable into the computer. So that's a very nice feature. I like this very much because I can change the gain settings and the expose and stuff like this. Um, and so I don't have to land, I do it in the air and that's what I want to show you now how this will work. First of all, you need the DJI Pilot app. Just go to your app store or to your Android store and there, for, and there search for the DJI Pilot app. The DJI Pilot app is a unique app, so it's also for smartphones and for uh, tablets or small tablets. Um, on the iOS side, you can use the iPhone 5S, 6 and 6 Plus, the iPad Mini 2 and 3, and the iPad Air and iPad Air 2. These are, these are the, the devices you can uh, use with the Phantom 3. <laughs> so when you have downloaded the app, just open the app and you will see that's the start screen and that's how the start screen looks like. Now we will start the uh, remote control and the copter. Please take care that you uh, remove the propellers because if you uh, are indoor and um, the uh, uh, engine starts or the propeller starts, um, um, then the copter will fly in your uh, room and I think that's not such a good idea. So please remove the propellers if you do some maintenance on the copter indoor. So now we start the Phantom. Here we are. And when we have a look on the start screen, we, you will see four different points. Let's start with the simplest point. That's the store. It's exactly the same uh, like you have when you go to the uh, dgi.com page. There you can buy all the stuff. So let's go back to the user center. And at the user center we have three different points. First of them is the album. Here you will see the photos, videos and my films. You have to download the photos and videos from the copter to the smartphone or to your tablet. Um, and then you will see here the different things. Next point is the flight record and here you will see all your flights. You will see how long they take, where you have been, the distance, time, maximum altitude and stuff like this. So you will see everything you have done in the, uh, with your Phantom 3 and you can, if you use different tablets, you can synchronize it over the cloud. I will show you after my first flight, I will go a little bit more deeper in this and then I can show you what you will see here in the uh, flight records. And the third point, that's the pilot, that's me, my user username, country, gender, email address, my aircrafts, the uh, Inspire 1 and the Phantom 3. So here you have your profile. Go back to the 
main page. Here we have the director. The director is a small software where you can um, cut some videos, make some scenes, um, put some scenes together, give them a little bit music in the background. And so it's a, it's a nice tool, but it's not a real advanced tool. So it's f uh, quick and dirty. You can, you can uh, put some of your flight uh, movies together and so that's quick and dirty but it works in my opinion you have better you have better software if you go like Pinnacle Studio stuff like this and load this one to your iPad and the last and most important point that's the camera because at the camera here we are with the picture the FPV picture of the copter and all the settings and that's what I want to do now I will go to the settings and show you the different options you have here. On the left lower corner you will see the map. When you tap your finger on the map you will see that the map opens up and here we are in the map view. This is the combination from uh, Google Earth and Street. So you can change here also to standard. Then you have only the streets. You can go to satellite only, then you have only the satellite view or you can use hybrid, then you have the satellite view and the street view. You can lock the compass here at this point, that's it, and you can go to your actual point like this. You can zoom in the app, uh, the, the picture and zoom out and I will show you later how you cage the maps so you don't have to load them via the mobile network when you're on the airfield. Um, you just can cage them so you have them in the device when you are on your spot where you want to fly. To toggle, just press the FPV picture and here we are back. At the upper right corner there you see, sorry, there you see a small compass and if you go to the compass you will see here is your copter here's the direction the copter nose shows so when I turn the copter now you will see that the nose also turns in uh, um, in the direction I turn the copter so that's a very good uh, option when you lost your copter when you're not sure in which direction the copter points and you want to hold, bring him back that's a real good option. So if you know the copter is in this position, just move the right stick backwards and the copter will fly backwards to you. If you turn the copter in a direction like this and move the stick forward, the copter will fly towards you. So that's a real good option to see um, uh, in which direction the copter shows and in which direction you have to fly to bring him back. Next point is the height here in meter. You can change to feet also, the distance in meter, the vertical speed in meter per second and the horizontal speed in meter per second. If you want to change, there's the option here in the menu where you can change to imperial and then you see that we have feet and miles per hour. If you are in the metric uh, schema, uh, and want to know what meters per second meets in kilometer per hour, just give it a three, uh, multiple it with a 3.6. So if you fly 10 meters per second, that's 36 kilometer per hour. Here at the last point, at the green symbol, you have the height. And the height is measured not by the barometer, but by the sensors here underneath the copter. So there's a, like a sonar and the sonar works very precise. So you have now a height of 0.2 meters. And when I move the copter back behind the table, you will see that the height goes up to 1.5 meter. Going back over the table and we are at 0.2 meter. So that's the sonar which gives you a very good control of the height. 
till a height of 2.6 or almost 3 meters then the barometer works and the sonar doesn't work any longer so that's the that's the uh, the limit is 2.6 almost 3 meters that's the limit how high this sonar works so very important these gives you very good information about your copter and if you're in a situation where you don't know where your copter is or in which direction it points look at these things and you will see if the copter comes back if the distance gets lower you know the copter is going back to you if the distance get higher you know you are in the wrong direction and fly the copter away from you on the left side we have three options that's the option auto start so if I press the auto start now it's uh, very safe because I have no uh, I have no uh, propellers here if I want to cancel just press the cancel button but if I want to make a start and take off just slide it and you see the cop that tries to take off you see it won't work because um, uh, I think he knows that there are no propellers on and so he stops the uh, propellers. Next point is the uh, return to home function. When I press this, um, the copter will return to home and land. I can use either the button here on the left side or I can use the button here on the remote control. Here's the return to home button. When I press the button longer, then I can um, then I can uh, fly automatically fly back the copter. The last point here is the home button. Um, when you start the copter, the copter saves the home position automatically. But when you walk around or when you make a, a follow flight behind a car or behind a boat, it's very important to actualize, uh, actualize the home point because when you drive with a car like one or two kilometers you don't want that the copter flies the whole way back to the home point so you have to set or you want to set the home point close to you and that's what you can do here you have two options the left one is the home point for the copter that's the point where the copter actual is or the right point is where the remote control is. So that's the point where you are. So if you drive with a car two kilometers and stop then, press this button and the home point is set at the point where you are with the remote control. So if you lose the connection or press the return to home button, the copter will come to this point and not to the first point you have set when you started the copter which was set automatically when you started the copter so that's very important activate the home point when you're moving from your further from your first start position so that the copter doesn't fly to this position but to the actual position Coming to the different menus here on top you can activate them by pressing the button and you can change it with this sidebar here you have the different options here at the sidebar where you can change the different settings. Starting with the beginner mode, when you activate the beginner mode you have a maximum flight altitude of 30 meters and a maximum flight of 30 meters. So it's like a dome where you fly under so the copter can't escape further than 30 meters and that's the beginner mode. If you switch off the beginner mode, you can set a um, maximum flight altitude between 10 and 500 meter. The copter cannot go higher than 500 meter. That's the maximum height. And you can set also a maximum distance. If you want to set it between 15 and 500 meters, you can set it here. I set it now to 300 meters. But if you don't want a distance, a maximum distance, just switch it off. Next point is gain and expert tuning. Well, that's a very important point because there you can check or set the sensitivity, how the copter reacts to your stick movements. Coming back to the stick movements, on the left side usually when you move the stick up and down, the copter descends and goes down, so up and down, that's the stick on the left side. If you move the left stick to the left and to the right, you turn the copter left and uh, clockwise and counterclockwise, 
and on the right side pulling the stick forward is flying forward, pulling the stick backward is flying backward, pulling the stick left and right is flying left and right. And in the Expo tuning you can set how sensitive the stick is on the first few millimeters. So if you move the stick a few millimeters and have an Expo tuning like this one, you see that at the first point there is not a big reaction on the copter. At the end there is much more reaction on the copter. If you have the opposite, if you have it like this, you will see that I, when, when I move the stick immediately we have a big reaction here. So the yellow point has a big, uh, big distance to the zero line so there is a fast reaction so that's not real sensitivity. That's for agro flying or for fast flying, FPV flying. There you need that the stick reacts absolutely direct with, with no uh, not delay. It's not a delay but not so sensitive you want to fly the copter real tough and straight and therefore you get should use high expo values. If you want to fly smooth for video flights, you want to turn the copter very slowly and precise, therefore are lower expo values. You can set up also expo values if you want to go up and down a little bit faster. You give them a little bit more like 0.6 and if you want to turn the copter very smooth, give this one here a very low expo value so you can turn the copter around the yaw axis very smooth and for flying normally give them the middle value like 0.5 and so you have a real good, um, good balance between the different settings. Next point that's for attitude and break the sensitivity so when you are in attitude mode and not in the GPS mode you can set also the sensitivity between 20 and 100. Just try, just try to fly in attitude mode and then you will see how this works and also the brake. You can set the brake, how hard the brake goes in when you fly forward and pull the stick back how hard the brake goes in. So that's also, you can try this one during the flights, check it, change the different values and check how the copter reacts to the different values and set the value which is most comfortable to you. We have the next point are the gain values and the gain values are like um, how not how sensible the first millimeters but how sensible or how direct the, uh, the, the stick movement goes to the copter. If you have low gain values and move the stick it takes a little bit before the copter moves. It's not very straight. It's a little bit softened. If you have high gain values it's absolutely direct. You move the stick and the copter flies directly to the left or to the right side so it's a, it's a real direct transmission to the copter and there's no soft, no a little bit smoother um, and so you can decide if you want to make video flies with a real with real soft fly with, with nice video pictures, no going left, right, left, right with very smooth flight. Use the lower gain values like 80, 70, 80. Um, these are lower gain values for video flights. If you want to fly a little bit more direct use 90, 10 or 110 and if you want to fly real straight and tough go up to 120. One important thing is when you have different wind uh, um, situations um, you should not go too low with the gain values because if there's coming a gust and have you, you have to, to turn the copter against the, the gust um, you should have a little bit higher gain values because if the gain values are too low the reaction time and the, the reaction how fast the copter works is a little bit too less. So please check if the wind is a little bit higher that you also higher the gain values a little bit so that you have a little bit more direct control over the copter. So, oops, sorry. So these were the gain settings. 
Next point is the remote control and here we have the gimbal wheel speed. On the back side of the copter, on the left side of the copter, you have this small wheel which you can turn and with this wheel you can, you can turn the camera of the copter downwards and upwards. And this speed you can change here in the gimbal wheel speed. If you go to a higher value you will see that the camera turns real fast. If you go to a lower value you will see that the camera turns very slow. And so that depends what you want. If you want, video, if you want to make video flights and you want to have a very slow camera then you have the set up a gimbal wheel speed like 30 or 40. If you want a little bit more, then go up to 60, 80. If you want to make an overflight and go up and turn the camera a little bit faster down, then you have to go like 60, 70. That's a real good value. So that's the gimbal wheel speed. Next point is RC calibration, remote control calibration. So you need, if you want to uh, recalibrate the sticks, turn off the copter and then make the calibration. Stick mode, that's what I said before. We work in mode 2. So on the left stick is forward and backward is going up and going down. Left, right is turning the copter left and right, counterclockwise and clockwise. And on the right stick we go forward, backward, right and left. So this is mode 2. Next point, uh, we have two buttons under the remote control which we can program and one of them I use for toggle between the map and the live view. So if I press this button here at the underneath the remote control I can change, just let me go out of the program, I can change between, oops, I can change between the map side and the first person view and the other side of the uh, uh, custom um, buttons I can turn the camera in the straight horizontal line or in the straight down line. I will hold the copter so you can see this, press the button once, here we go absolutely down, press the button again we go absolutely straight. So that's what I put on the that's what I put on the um, on the two custom buttons toggle between map and live view and camera forward down. You can choose between different settings gimbal in follow or FPV mode toggle map live view that's what I showed you before clear, clear flight route battery info these are the points which you can choose from. Okay, linking RC, linking the remote control is if you want to use another remote control, maybe the one of the Inspire one and then switch back to this one, you have to link the copter with the remote control and this is very easy because here at the side we have here at this point we have a small pin uh, which we have to press down with a, with a pen and then here press the linking RC button and then you can connect the copter with the remote control. So this works very easy. HD transmission, image transmission, here we have the auto setup or the custom setup. You can decide either if you work in auto, then the copter search for the best transmission channel and if you uh, have um, sometimes dropouts or something like this and you want to set up an individual channel just go to custom and then look which channel seems to be fine and then change like channel 17 here we are and now we are fixed on channel 17 here you can change the image transmission quality from high to low so these are the settings of the image transmission. Now we go to the battery and in the battery we have different settings. You can see uh, the battery status here. You see the voltage, the remaining power, the total capacity, the temperature, flight time. These were the flight time, just the auto takeoff. Low battery warning at 30% and critical battery warning at 10%. I would uh, leave the settings like they are because 30% are real good value and 10% also real good value. Don't lower them too much because you get 
um, when you when you lower them to 20% you don't have a lot of time to come back and um, so I would suggest let them on 30%. You can toggle here if you want oops you can toggle here if you want to see the uh, voltage here at the uh, at the top or only the percentage. Now we have only the per percentage. Um, now we have only the percentage and if I switch this one to on you have not only the percentage but also the real value. Time to discharge 10 days. This doesn't mean that the uh, battery discharges in 10 days but this means that the battery begins to discharge after 10 days. So if you don't fly for a long time um, the battery lowers the voltage down to 3.7 volt because this is the optimal voltage to store lithium polymer batteries and so this makes the intelligent flight battery automatically after 10 days. So if you have a full charged battery after 10 days the intelligent um, the intelligent electronic lowers the, the um, voltage to 3.7 automatically after the 10th ten, day this begins and I don't know how long it takes but I think it takes like one or two days and then you have the optimum voltage of 3.7 volt. It's very important to remember this because if you fly like for three or four weeks not and then you want to start, please remember the voltage is low. It's 3.7 volts so it's not, you don't have batteries with full capacity so it's very important to charge the battery just the evening before you want to fly because after one, uh, one month the voltage is down to 3.7 volt and so that's very important to check the battery just before you start flying. Next point is the uh, gimbal mode. We have the follow and FPV mode. I change between both um, and I know from the Phantom 2 that we, when we are in the, in the, um, in the uh, follow mode, uh, in the FPV mode, the camera turns also when you fly curves. But um, as you can see, the camera is still in the horizon um, or is still leveled. Um, and so I don't know what the FPV mode means because usually when you fly FPV the camera should turn the horizontal a little bit so it's a little bit more um, dynamic flight. I don't know why it doesn't um, so I still stay in the follow mode. Camera forward down that's what I showed you before when I press the button you can do it also here in the manual. Adjust gimbal roll so when the horizon is not perfect straight you can just adjust it here a little bit um, and make the camera turn the camera a little bit so you can adjust the uh, horizon with this function here. Gimbal auto calibration just put the copter on a level surface and make the gimbal auto calibration and in the advanced settings we have the same like we have um, for the sticks. We have the gimbal pitch expo. So that's how the uh, wheel here on the back side reacts. And so you can change also the expo value here um, at, the, at this setting. Gimbal pitch limit 15 degree moving up. So when you move the gimbal in the horizontal position like this, and you want to move the gimbal higher, there is no option to move the gimbal higher. You can move the camera downward but not upwards. And here we have the gimbal pitch limit 15 degrees. I just activate this point and at this moment I can move up the camera way high, 15 degrees up. So that's the option here. Gimbal pitch limit. Okay, so let's turn the camera downside. So these are the gimbal settings. One important point, please remember that the gimbal settings are not here in this, uh, in this menu. You have to go to one point of these menu points and then you will see at the left side the gimbal settings. So that's very important. Um, you won't find the gimbal settings directly in one of these um, menus here. Last point, 
Now we are in the general settings here, what I showed you before. We have the units of measurement between imperial and metric. Enable hardware decode. Usually you only have to enable the hardware decode if you use an iPad Air 2 because this uh, processor is strong enough um, so you don't have to use the hardware decode of the remote control or the copter. File index mode is if you change an SD card and use a new one, you can choose between direct and continuous. I would suggest continuous because if you use continuous, you won't have mismatch with uh, double file names. And so that's why I use continuous. YouTube live streaming. I'm so sorry. I can't show you how the YouTube live streaming works because in Germany, we don't have the YouTube live streaming. It's not allowed because of the... Uh, music uh, management company GEMA and uh, so they have problems with the law and so in Germany we don't have the YouTube live streaming so I'm so sorry that I don't uh, I'm, I'm not able to show to show you how this will work then we have the show flight route where you can show the flight route in the map. I will show you when I make my first flight. Calibrate map for China mainland. That's what the name said, only for China mainland. Cage map in the background. That's what I said before at the beginning. And when you have a tablet or a computer without uh, 3G or the mobile connection, internet mobile connection, um, then you cage the maps just before you go flying and then when you're on the spot you have the maps even if you don't have an internet connection. Clear flight route is uh, clear. You um, remove the, uh, the path, the flight path from the map. Video cage. When you fly and you have the, you have the option to um, take the video here also on the tablet. So um, normally the video is taken here on the micro SD card at the side of the, of the uh, Phantom 3. You have the micro SD card where the videos and photos are uh, saved. Um, and also you have the video cage where you can save the video here in the cage of the tablet. But very important, only in the small HD resolution. Small HD resolution means 7020 and not the 1920 by 1080 resolution, only the 1280 by 720, the low HD resolution. But you have the video here on the tablet. You can use the director. That's what I showed you before. The small um, software where you can cut films. And so you have the option. You don't have to copy the stuff from the copter to the tablet. It's just in the video cage where you can cut the video. Auto clean up after 2 GB depends how big is your a smartphone if you have a big one you don't have to use this point otherwise you should use this point because then after two gigabyte the cage is cleared last point tutorial rate and about me that's not real important and we are done with the main settings of the dgi pilot app here on the right side we have the different settings for photo and video and that's what i will show you in the next part of the DJI pilot app video. There I will explain you some differences between the different settings for photo and video. Hope it helped you a little bit to understand how the DJI pilot app works um, and um, what to do with the pilot app. Very important when you fly you have lots of information. What I said before, lots of information to get back your copter, don't get nervous, don't uh, move the sticks around and you don't know what to do. Stay calm, wait just 10 seconds, breath three times and then go to the settings here and look where the copter is and make slow stick movements and then see if the distance get lower and stuff like this. So that's very important to stay calm and not to get nervous in a critical situation. Yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed my video and it helps you a little bit to understand how the uh, DJI Pilot app works. If, it, if you like my video, 
Yes, please give me a like here, subscribe to my channel. Yeah, and stay tuned. The next video about the pilot app photo and video option is just to uh, get produced by me. And so I think in the next few days you will see the next part of my video tutorials just before we make our first flight with the Phantom 3. Stay tuned, have a nice day, good flights and as always bye and moin moin.